Hello. Oh, Ooh, you can, yeah. You can hear the woman, can't you? <laughs> Her voice is not getting drowned out. Not at all. Sure. Not at all. So how are you doing this morning? Yeah? yeah. Heard some good things already? Yeah. 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 Great. Well, welcome. Um, this is uh, Lisa and my first time in India. And uh, we like it. There yeah. was some resistance when I had to get a lot of shots before I came. <laughs> yes. But you guys are really nice. Yep. You know that? Yep. Like, we go, we go all around the world, and not everybody's really nice. Yeah. And it's a wonderful city. It's so different. We've been all around the city. We've been here for two days. So we've been all around, seeing all different parts, and we still want more suggestions of things that we need to see while we're here. So please let us know. This talk is titled Windows on Transformation, and there was a um, miscalculation in the number of pathways. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually 64, I'm realizing. 64 Not pathways. Four. But it gets reduced to four. Don't worry about it. It gets simpler. So <laughs> the, um, the challenge of, our, of this time right now, you know, the challenge of how to develop software in a way that works has been solved, right? It's really pretty obvious that Agile is the way to develop software, and there's so much innovation happening. Mm -hmm. That's a really clear uh, pathway mm -hmm. for us. The, the challenge that I see, and, and uh, Lisa and I work uh, around the world um, teaching uh, several thousand uh, Agile coaches at this point yep. in all kinds of different organizations, and what they consistently say to us is, we're disappointed with how our organization, we're really pretty happy with our team, but we're not very happy with the rest of our organization and how it adopts Agile. I see many of you with very big nods out there right now, yes? And yeah. enterprise Agile is the challenge of our time. Scaling mm -hmm. is part of that, but scaling is not the whole thing. Right. It's how to get Agile and what we like about our teams into the whole organization, isn't it? Right. Isn't that a challenge for you? And isn't it what you want? Yes. Is what you want and are you getting what you want? Probably some of you are and probably most of you are not. Mm -hmm. If you're like the people that we talk to around the world, most people are not getting what they want. Yeah. So we want to talk a little bit about the complexity of this enterprise world we're in and all the noise that's around us. The, um, actually, I want to yeah. uh, pause just for a second. Um, Lisa wrote a book. Did anybody know Lisa's book? Anybody read it? Coaching, uh, I've met Agile many teams. of you already. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't gotten it, you should get it. If you, if you do anything to lead Agile teams, you should read that book. Mm -hmm. And it's not because Lisa makes money and she pays me that I say that. You know, I actually don't make very much money on a book. I don't know if you know that. But it's because <laughs> it's a useful book for people and people find it very useful. Yeah. I'm writing a book too right now called Coaching the Agile Enterprise yeah. to address, like I say, what I think is the challenge of this time in, in history. Yeah. And we'll tell you how to get it later, but an excerpt of his book is already available. The first four chapters, and pretty soon the first five chapters of the book is pre-released. Yeah. All right, so now we're back to the enterprise noise, huh? We're so going to have to go fast with all this noise. We have to go fast with all this noise? Fast with the noise, because hmm. it is kind of like that in the real world, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on. If you look at, if, again, if you look at a team, there's a lot of stuff going on. But if you take that to your uh, department that you're in or the program that you're a part of or the organization, the business unit you're in or the enterprise you're in, my gosh, there's all kind of stuff going on. First, there's an organizational structure. Who reports to whom? Who cares about what? Who's measuring whom to do what, right? Yeah. Ooh, this is really slow, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There's how do I get ahead? How am I going to get promoted? How am I going to get noticed by my boss? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's going on inside you. Anybody mm -hmm. care about that? You care about you that? Sure. And, 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 and I have my own strategy and my own you know, set of whatever, and she's got hers, yeah. and you've got yours, and, and you've got yours. And then when we mix that all up, holy cow, lots of stuff is going on, right? And then how do you get things done here? What are the processes? How do we make this simple for everyone? Are any of you finding that the processes in your organization inhibit what your teams can do? Anyone finding that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge problem for us as Agilists, right, and how we work with those processes. 
And then we have, we just were talking about this at, at uh, breakfast today, we have the lunchroom problem. Who likes who? When who you go into like the who? cafeteria, you scout for who you're going to sit with, right? Yeah. Don't you? Right. Let's see, who do I like? Who likes me? Right. And, and again, that's going on times 1,200. I mean, what, what's the exponent, what's the uh, factorial number of all those connections of you like who and who likes you and, mm -hmm. and how about for her and how about for you and how about yeah. for you? Oh All my gosh, this is going on. there's a lot of stuff. Here's another bit of noise. How do leaders lead? Well, most leaders aren't actually very mature as leaders, even if they've made it up to the CIO, CTO, CEO kind of rank, right? They want to lead in an old way that doesn't work in our world. And then there's uh, a, a lot of these are about our culture. Mm -hmm. Culture is the big glass ceiling that stops Agile from working because it goes, anybody have a problem with Agile, their culture not working with Agile? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Very few companies Agile actually works well with. So this is the reality we're working in, right? And there are lots of different ways to work with all this enterprise noise, not just one way, not just one solution. All right, so we want to um, tell you a bit about the good news and the bad news. Um, those of you may, might know about this survey. Version 1 does it every year. It's called the State of Agile Survey. This is the eighth time they've done it. The results have just come out. The great news is that, that Agile is normal. <laughs> That's the good news. Agile's oh. normal now. Most, most organizations are using it. Most teams use Agile. The continued bad news, they're, they're reporting for the eighth year in a row, is that the glass ceiling that keeps Agile from going into our enterprise are these things. Inability, In inability to change organizational culture. So culture is the biggest thing by right. far. And general resistance to change. These things have nothing to do with Agile. But they're what Agile creates, because Agile is a change maker in organizations, right? And so this is what you're being asked to step into if you want Agile to be in your organization, that you have to somehow work with these reasons why it's not performing as well as you'd like. So the framework that we're going to talk to you about today um, addresses all these issues. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make them go away magically. It's not an alternative to something mm -hmm. else, but it's a meta map, a meta way of seeing why all this stuff is so mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. And one of our primary messages for you is that just like you have to upgrade your machine, your phone, all of those other things in your life, you also need to upgrade yourself, your own internal operating system. Because it's not just about learning the latest framework or scaling pattern or continuous delivery method. It's about being able to apply those in a way that brings an agile mindset. Yeah. So this is one type of window, and now we want to just go to regular old windows. These are regular windows, right? So look at these windows and see which one you like. Typically, you're drawn to one of these more than the other, right? This is the one I happen to like because it's straightforward, it's very plain, and it's useful. I can see lots of stuff through this window. Ooh, there's something. So I can see this woman. She's got a long dress on. She's standing in front of some kind of tree, it looks like, that's flowering or something like that. And I could get so interested in what I'm seeing through this window. I could say, oh my gosh, what is that? Is that a baby she's holding? What's going on there? And I could just really get so delved into this that I don't, understand it all that this is only a slight picture of what's really going on. This is something called nine faces. There are nine different faces in this picture. If you find all nine, you're supposed to be a genius. I've only found six. But this is like our enterprises. They are this complex. Oh, I see you. Yeah, there's one over there in the, in the top right-hand corner. It's pretty cool. Our enterprises are complex. And if we drill down on the one thing that we think is going to solve it, we might not be solving the right problem. And what's useful for us is to be able to look through multiple windows, multiple windows to see what's going on. We still don't get a completely 100% complete picture, but we'll certainly get more of a picture when we look through multiple windows. So that's a bit of a metaphor for what we're doing in this talk. And the other thing that I want to tell you um, is a little bit, bar it's a lot borrowing from a 13th century poet and mystic, Rumi. Who's heard of Rumi ever? 
oh, thank goodness, I'm here. If you do this in the United States, like one person raises their hand. You know? So here's a wonderful poem by Rumi that I love. He says, an ant hurries along a threshing floor with its weak grain, moving between huge stacks of wheat, not knowing the abundance all around. It thinks its one grain is all there is to love. A lot of times in the Agile community, we're like that ant. We hurry around clutching our one grain. We say, oh, it's safe. Safe will make it work. Oh, it's continuous integration. Integration, continuous integration will make it work. Oh, it's a leadership maturity. If our leaders get more mature, it'll make Agile work. And actually, all of those are but partial answers because we have this abundance all around us of great answers for truly complex situations when we look at the complexity of it instead of trying to simplify it. Yeah. So here's the great thing. Human beings are not ants. We're not stuck in our one experience. The gift of being human is that we can take on different perspectives. Yeah. We can see a situation from multiple angles. Yeah. In fact, um, studying psychology, which I have my training is in psychology, if you study developmental psychology, you find that people grow and mature by their ability to take multiple perspectives. Mm -hmm. A child, at very young, doesn't have the ability to take somebody else's perspective. They don't know when, a, when they hold up a block that uh, f facing you it's red, but facing me it's yellow. They don't know, they see red. They don't know that even if you show them, here's the yellow, now, what color am I seeing? They go red because they can't take they your know. perspective. Yeah. So it's a sign of our maturity that we can take more perspectives. So this mm -hmm. talk is about perspectives. Mm -hmm. And it's about upgrading. We talked about that internal operating system. It's about getting some new models that help you upgrade that operating system so you can work with the complexity that's really there in your organizations. The upgrade we're talking about is this computer right here. And actually, it's really this computer right here because did you, do you know that you have a brain in your heart mm -hmm. and in your gut as well? Mm -hmm. There's not as many neurons there, but there are quite a, it is quite a lot of uh, processing function that's available in your gut. Mm -hmm. That's why you have a gut sense of something and why it doesn't feel right to me yeah. because there's brains there. So the upgrade is about an integral operating system, integral. So what do we mean by integral? We mean that it possesses everything, that it's comprehensive, that it can handle anything, that it can handle everything from scaling Agile to people's values, that it can handle everything from uh, culture and how we do things around here and who likes who to uh, what is, how can we visualize the work? Mm -hmm. Those are very different things. Yeah. So we have a model. Um, the model contains quadrants and altitudes. So the quadrants are four big perspectives that you can take on things, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. In the meantime, we're going to talk about these, uh, primarily these four or five what we call altitudes or different levels of seeing things, different mm -hmm. uh, greater perspectives that we can take uh, on the world. So we're going to talk about this altitudes first. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is some research from a man uh, whose name is Claire Graves. Mm -hmm. And he did research a long time ago, mm -hmm. um, but it was profound because he asked the question, what is mature personality? Mm -hmm. He was asked by a student. He taught personality courses in college, and he was asked by a student at one point after they looked at all the different theorists that are, there are out there, so which one of them is right? Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't know. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have a... He didn't have his own theory of which one he thought was right. He decided to just ask students to write down, what do you think a mature person is or does? What are they like? And he uh, found these answers. He did this, this uh, research every year for nine years. And each year, he had different sets of judges rate, like between seven and nine judges, which is a lot. Usually, you only have three when you're doing work like this. Which one, uh, or, or how do they, these categorize together? How are they similar to each other? These were just written, free form written uh, examples of what does it mean to be a mature person. Yeah. 
and he came up with five different um, uh, conceptions that people had together. The first one, and these, these colors came in later, he didn't call them that. The, the first one is called Express Self and to Hell with Others, Lest I Feel Ashamed Because I'm Not Taking My Power. <laughs> this is like a three-year-old. Okay. Or a dictator. This. Or what? Or a dictator. Yes, or a dictator. Yeah. And, and it's about, um, it's the heroic struggle of I'm going to conquer the world in some <laughs> sense. It's a very important thing. Everybody has to go through that uh, phase, um, that, that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And some parts of the world, that's still the way it is. Mm -hmm. uh, much of Africa, uh, that's still the way it is. Um, <clears throat> the next uh, kind of uh, uh, conception was um, called sacrifice now to get a reward later. Mm -hmm. These people believed in the truth. They believed that their system mm -hmm. was completely true. Usually mm -hmm. those are associated with religions. Mm -hmm. Christianity, uh, Islam, uh, uh, Hinduism, uh, whatever uh, philosophy, communism even, the Soviet Union was very mm -hmm. amber. Um, uh, and, and actually I want to I wanna say he started to study, he didn't have enough people in red because most of the people that we encounter in modern organizations are not at that level of development. Mm -hmm. okay. There's a few uh, bullies uh, and uh, uh, actually, um, it's it's common in a um, uh, what do you call it in an illegal organization in the, the a criminal organization crime, <laughs> drug cartels are are red organizations. Yeah. But most modern organizations are not don't have that kind of a culture. Um, when he, he he put these different groups, and we'll, we'll get to what the other ones are. He put them together. So he put all the people that were sacrificed now to get reward later, the amber people together, mm -hmm. and, and, and gave them a project to see. They didn't know they were in the same grouping, or they had the same site of, sort of conception. And they, guess what? They organized into a pyramid, mm -hmm. into a hierarchy, into a couple of hierarchies usually. And they didn't have disagreements between different levels in the hierarchy, only at the same level. Only the mm -hmm. top people did, or the people in the middle, or the people at the bottom did. And when they had problems at this level, they would go up one level to their hierarchy, up one level. These guys would argue, or go up and up, these guys would argue. Sounds kind of like some organizations, perhaps. Yeah, it might be beginning to sound familiar. Right. This uh, orange one, next one, express self-calculatedly with little shame or guilt. So that's a, a step up from red. Mm -hmm. I've now developed some kind of a moral code and, and I uh, act in an ethical way, what mm -hmm. uh, Martin was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to get what I, what's due me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for success. I'm mm -hmm. looking for rewards. I'm looking for promotion. I'm looking to be the yeah. best I can be. Yeah. Um, this is very highly individualistic. It's about me and achieving. And when, when these people got together and organized, they... Um, uh, fought each other for who was going to take the lead. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they competed for, you know, no, I'm better. No, my idea is better. Mm -hmm. uh, no, mine is. And whoever could maintain dominance at some point became the leader mm -hmm. until their idea stopped working, and then they were thrown out. Mm -hmm. And then the new leader emerged with a new idea, and then the same cycle continued. Does that sound like any companies you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next uh, uh, place was called uh, Sacrifice Self Now to Get a Reward Now. So this is called Green. This is um, uh, some of what uh, Martin was just talking about. This is the place of a humanist. Now, many people don't get to this level of development. They don't move this far. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, uh, people, the people that organized this way when, the, when people all at Green got together. They were really careful. Mm -hmm. They really wanted to hear what the other person said. They spent so much time listening to each other and being really polite. We wanted total to make harmony. Sure, we wanted to make sure we get consensus before mm -hmm. we move on. We don't mm -hmm. want anybody to be unhappy. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we all get along together mm -hmm. and we all hear each other's viewpoints because, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's important to hear each other's viewpoints, yeah? Right. So when Green goes too far, a group like that can't get anywhere. They can't go anywhere. They can't get off the starting block, right? But it also is a, is a higher form of maturity because it's inclusive. 
The ones prior to it are quite exclusive. So here's where the story gets interesting from an Agile point of view. Mm -hmm. um, Agile is uh, a way of thinking that's basically at the green and the teal level. It's not, and most companies are at the orange level. The culture of almost all companies is a combination of amber, mainly orange, and a little bit of green. The, the green is the political correctness part. Yeah. Um, yeah. But agile is an idea that you can start to see it in green in us valuing each other's mm -hmm. opinions, and particularly you can start to see it at teal, um, mm -hmm. where um, the people that organized at teal, they were really interested in getting their ideas out. They were really interested in people um, hearing what they had to say. Mm -hmm. But they didn't, they didn't diss each other. They didn't um, you know, uh, talk badly about each other. They disagreed with their ideas, but they didn't vilify or make the person wrong. Mm -hmm. And so even somebody who took a leadership position, it was very fluid. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, it changed from person to person according to what the task was, according to what the problem was. Huh, does that sound familiar? Sounds like some of the best Agile teams. So we're going to have to go a little bit faster through the next bit of this. It's good that we've laid this ground. We've got about 15 minutes. So um, we're not going to go over this chart. This is just to show you the complete set of, of these. There's actually a couple more before red. Mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, the, the online column is how long that's been in human culture. Yeah. So this is not just about individuals. This is about how whole societies develop, right? how we've evolved as people. As whole cultures. Yeah. So um, uh, Graves also asked the question, how should we manage people depending on what mm -hmm. uh, level of development they primarily think from? Now, mm -hmm. with any kind of developmental theory, it's not that you are uh, green or you are orange. It's really more where's your center of gravity. It's a preference mm -hmm. or a um, way that you express yourself, mainly at one of these levels. And for right now, because we're all developing and we're all evolving becoming more and more enlightened. So it turns out, if you look at, we're going to uh, ignore red. That's just there for you to see it. Um, uh, the amber is a pyramid mm -hmm. or hierarchy. That's the natural uh, organizational form of an amber culture. Mm -hmm. um, and the normal management style in that organization is paternalistic. It means mm -hmm. the, the boss takes care of you and expects you to do what they say. You're supposed to obey uh, mm -hmm. authority, mm -hmm. right? Now, people at that, that are uh, at that level want to be managed in the way that the next level is. So people at Amber actually want to be managed in a consultative way. They want to be asked their opinion. They don't expect to be making the decision, but they, they'd like to be asked their opinion. By the same token, somebody uh, at uh, Orange, um, who the normal management style is consultative, wants to be managed in a participative way. Starting to see how Agile fits in here, right? Most of our organizations are orange, many of them. And Agile team members want to be worked with in more of a participative way, going to the next level. So the, the other thing about people at each of these um, uh, centers of gravity is that they think that the people at the, you know, so orange, for instance, thinks that amber is crazy and thinks yep. that green is nuts. Okay? Yeah. So they don't get along very well. They don't tend to talk to each other. They tend to think that the other uh, people are stupid. Sound like conversations in the Agile community? Where it's like this guy is talking to this guy and they're crossing completely, not understanding each other? So you have yeah. fights between different levels. Yeah. Fights are often between different levels of thinking, different yeah. styles of thinking. Yeah. If you take this into Agile, um, so if you take it down into Amber, it's not going to work very well. Mm -mm. It's going to be, they're going to want to follow rules. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to follow strict rules. Mm -hmm. They're not going to like um, shifting or, or fuzzying the roles very yeah. much. You know, no, I'm a tester. That's what I do. Stay mm -hmm. out of my business. Mm -hmm. You know, I have my manager to report to who's expecting me to do a certain thing. I'm, I'm you know, obeying, you know, what that uh, function is. I'm loyal to that. Um, if you get to orange with Agile, Agile's going to show up very oriented toward money. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really care about this mumbo-jumbo Agile philosophy you talk about. Just show me the money. Just show me the results. Have any managers like that? Yeah. Sure. Now, actually, you can, you can work with an orange uh, manager pretty well. 
Agile works pretty well at that level but because Agile is results driven. They won't want to hear about the mumbo jumbo values and consensus yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Don't even bother talking to them about that. Now, at, at Green, people driven Agile, um, that's going to be very, uh, you know, we're going to really want to listen to each other. We're going to want to self organize. We're going to like that idea. We're going to like the idea that we get to make our own mm -hmm. estimates of things. But we're also not going to want to make other people mad. And so we're not going to mm -hmm. sometimes make the hard choices. We're going to get. And any of you have experienced the teams that get locked in consensus? They can't come to consensus because somebody's disagreeing? Yeah, yeah. That would that's be an green overabundance team. of green. Yeah. When you get to teal, that's what I call adaptive Agile because that's when Agile really works the way it's supposed to because mm -hmm. Agile is a teal-oriented philosophy or way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you think about the Agile manifesto, most of what's in it comes from a green or teal perspective. And it's trying to work in organizations that are amber or orange. So for instance, uh, plan driven is an amber orange kind of a concept. Mm -hmm. uh, adaptive planning is a teal concept. Yeah. So if you're feeling pain, we hope this starts to explain a little bit about why that's so. You're at different levels of evolution, literally. You are at different levels of evolution from the people in your organization. Now, this is from uh, recent work. Uh, I see the source got dropped off um, of, uh, unless it's in the next build, um, a man named uh, uh, Lalu. I can't remember his last name. Uh, it'll be in the slides that we have online. Mm -hmm. And he's studied these organizations that are at Teal. There's not very many of them in the world. Again, part of the disconnect. The organizations that we want have just started to come online, and there's not many of them out there. Most mm -hmm. organizations are... Uh, fundamentally in orange. They're mm -hmm. not yet at teal. Mm -hmm. So you need to start some organizations. That's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. If you don't like your organization and how they're becoming agile, you need to start your own. Yep. There's plenty of people you could network with here to figure out how you're going to start. Here's, if, you, if you'll notice, don't, you don't even need to worry about the orange organizations in this uh, middle column. Mm -hmm. Um, look, at the, look at the teal organizations. And, now, this guy, I want to make a really important point here. This guy was not studying organizations that use Agile software development. He doesn't even know about Agile. He doesn't even know about that. He was just studying organizations, <laughs> and here's what he found. Let's see, they have self-organizing teams, and they have coaches that hmm. don't have management authority. Does that sound like us? Huh. Okay. They uh, don't have, uh, when they recruit people, they don't do interviews. The manager or the HR does it. The team does it. Well, sometimes we get to do that as Agilists, right? Well, that makes sense. They don't focus on individual performance and have the supervisor appraise them. They uh, have the, the team appraise each other. And it's a team-based kind of a thing. You know, how many times have I heard Agilists want to go there? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not going to happen in their organization probably because they don't live in teal organizations unless they create a small encapsulated part. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. so that's a lot about the altitudes. That's a lot about the altitudes. Yeah. So think about altitudes as, as levels of development. Yeah. And now we're going to quadrants. This is back to the idea of windows. What window are you looking through to look at your enterprise when you want it to be agile? So uh, this is, uh, um, again, part of Integral. Integral, uh, I should say, was uh, developed by a man named Ken Wilbur. Mm -hmm. And um, right now there's an Integral movement that's actually uh, not too dissimilar from the uh, Agile movement. It's all across the world. There's uh, thousands of practitioners of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look it up online. Mm -hmm. um, and what he did from, from researching hundreds and hundreds of systems of thought, everything from spirituality to psychology, to uh, physics, to mm -hmm. biology, evolution, theory theory. He saw patterns in them, mm -hmm. and he saw four basic patterns, that things were either about um, an individual level of things, mm -hmm. or they were about a collective level, mm -hmm. and things were either um, internal, um, what we call subjective, mm -hmm. or they were external or surface or objective. Yeah. And uh, he came up with... Just very simply, I, we, it, and its. Really basic. 
you're, you're sitting there, duh, hello, of course there's first, second, and third person. Yep. All languages represent that. Mm -hmm. uh, come on. <clears throat> so if we, if we think about it, this window we could call the psychological window. It's what happens inside someone. It's, it's, what, it's what only you have access to in your own self, what I think, what I feel, what I'm trying to do. Or you can get access to somebody else by talking to them. That's how you get access to somebody else's I. Their it, on the other hand, the, uh, the behavioral window, is something that you see from outside. I see your behavior and I have a certain uh, uh, reaction to it. I see if you check in code or not. I see if you uh, talk in a, a, a nice way. I see if you're doing test-driven development or not. It's just easy to measure. Um, the, the we window is the cultural window. It's what mm -hmm. we all believe together and our relationships with each other. And are they um, positive or are they uh, tense and, and strained? Mm -hmm. And then this final one is the systems window. How do our systems work from an objective external point of view? like a, an anthropologist would examine and, and find the artifacts of our um, uh, uh, culture. Yeah. So there's different, there's different kinds of methodologies that work in each of these windows. Mm -hmm. Now, none of these is right. Nope. None of these is right. They're all happening at all the time. It just depends on where your attention is. If I look through the psychological window, I might be focused on somebody's emotional intelligence. Are they aware of their own feelings? Do they know how to relate to others? How are they as a leader? How do they, how do they lead the organization? Have they developed to a level of maturity that they can actually be an agile leader? Right. Over if behavioral. I, if I look through the behavioral window, I'm going to use the scientific method. I'm going to be objective. I'm going to only look at the surface of things because that's all I can see. I don't know about what's going on inside. I can only um, see what I see. That's where statistics comes in, yeah. where um, looking at a process uh, chart, for instance, comes in. Yeah. Use, very useful methods, right? Mm -hmm. Down on the cultural window, also useful, right? This is where vision lives. This is where meaning making lives. It's where our shared mental models, how we, what we believe together collectively that might be true or might not be true. Yeah. Just check it out. Sometimes do these things hold back your agile implementation? what we believe together? The answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, in the, uh, in the uh, systems window, we have systems thinking, mm -hmm. right? We have um, things like uh, the scaled agile framework mm -hmm. is, is in uh, this window. Yep. Um, actually, that's the, the next slide. Um, uh, we look at whole system effects of yep. how things work. Yep. Um, Let's go way, yeah. Yeah. Let's get so um, just take, to take a simple example outside the Agile world, um, if we're talking about how people look at depression, mm -hmm. if I'm looking from uh, the eye window, the psychological window, I'm going to say you need to have therapy. If I'm going to look through the uh, 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 behavioral yeah, window, window, I'm going to say you need Zoloft, you need a drug. Mm -hmm. If I look through uh, the, the we window, I'm going to say how's your support group? You know, maybe you should have people uh, uh, give you good thoughts, pray for you. Scientific benefit to people praying for you, by the way. Um, if I look through the it's window, I'm going to say, what's the person's socioeconomic status? Do they have health insurance? Do they, are, are they in a place where they can get good treatment? All of those are going to make a difference. But usually, your doctor is almost certainly biased toward one of those. And you, as an individual agilist, are certainly biased toward one of these windows. And we want to get you to start pointing your attention to what it might be for you. So, so look at these things. So here's some of the things in the, in the uh, agile world. Um, so think about, uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the book, Leadership Agility by Bill Joyner. Mm -hmm. it, it's a look at um, levels of uh, leaders' uh, ma developmental maturity, actually sort of similar to what we've been talking about with the altitudes or yeah. levels. Um, if I focus on, um, it's really important to be agile, not just to do agile, but to be agile. You hear people talk about that. That's an mm -hmm. I kind of a place to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Bill Schneider's culture model, uh, control, competence, 
collaboration, cultivation. Some of you have probably heard of that. That's a we way of looking at what do we all believe together. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like I said, over in its, the scaled agile framework is, is an its way of looking at things. It's an exterior mm -hmm. scientific method, um, uh, uh, sort of mm -hmm. depersonalized mm -hmm. way. It's a process system. Mm -hmm. So all of these are fine. All of these things and all these quadrants are fine and they all have to work together. Not any one of these things will give you enterprise agile by itself. Your organization is too complex. Um, in, the, in the IT window, uh, we have the level of a, of a single technical practice. Not how they all interact with each other, but take a technical practice and actually do it. And did we check in the code? So if your tendency is to look through the its window, for example, and if you think um, safe is it, safe is going to do it for us, it's going to help us be enterprise agile everywhere, great. It's a piece of the puzzle. The challenge for you, because you are a human being and you can take different perspectives, is to look through the other three windows. What's going on in my organization? What level, what altitude, what uh, what a level of evolution is the organization at? What can they handle there? What do I need to do from the other three? So that's where the arguments happen between the levels and between the quadrants. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if I, usually my preference as a human, mine, mine happens to be uh, we and then secondarily I. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my bias. That's just where I think all the time is from a, is from a, a human systems point of view. Mm -hmm. And what's the feeling state between us? That's how I see the world. Yeah. That's my bias. Yeah. So let's, let's do a quick poll. How many people, so what you're looking for up here is, oh yeah, those are, those, the ones that you say, well yeah, that's just the way it is. That's probably that's your, your bias. bias. How if many you, people are an I? How many people think they might look at the world through an I window? Anybody? First. Okay, good, great. A couple people over here. How about we? We? More we's? Yeah, oh, great. Quite a few we's. Right. How about it? Uh -huh. yeah, great. Yeah, How about its? Yeah, great. Cool. So uh, we didn't ask you to look around, but you should look around for people that don't have your quadrant bias. For me, I got to find people that do it because that's the hardest for me. Me too. I totally don't get it. So if you raised your hand for it, help me. <laughs> yeah. all right. All right. And we have to get all four. So knowing your preference is really key to you being able to help your organization use Agile everywhere at the enterprise level. Yeah. This is look, about upgrading your internal operating systems, what we're talking about. Your ability to take on these perspectives upgrades your operating system. Yeah. So this is the, the full, um, uh, what I call a meta map of Agile enterprise transformation. Because, and the point of this, I, I've put names on each of the quadrants from an Agile enterprise transformation point of view. And if you don't address all four of these, you're unlikely to have a very successful implementation. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you don't figure out which altitude is my organization as a whole coming from, which altitude am I coming from, what's, mm -hmm. the, what's the delta, what's the difference between those two, mm -hmm. What's the strategy that I'm going to have if I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm dealing with an orange organization? I'm going to have to talk results. I'm going to have to mm -hmm. talk pure dollars and cents yeah. kind of value. Yeah. And does it make results? Not does it make people happier? Right. They're not going to care about that so much they unless you care. can tie it directly to, yeah, well, you know, less turnover means you've saved this much money. Yeah. In, a, so. in a green organization, if you work in Scandinavia, for instance, uh, anybody here from Scandinavia? Yeah, got one. Uh, Scandinavian culture in general is green. Mm -hmm. Their politics are green. Politics in the U.S. is uh, orange uh, amber versus green. Mm -hmm. That's the Republican. Huge transition Democrats. in the United States right now. Yeah. So, okay. We want to give you a couple things that will help you. One is the excerpt from Michael's book. So if you go to agilecoachinginstitute.com, this is what the home page looks like, and right on the home page is the ability to download that excerpt. It describes all this in much more detail, relates it to Agile um, all along the way. It's, yeah. a, it's a slow read. Don't expect to breeze through it. It's not exactly... Um, You're uh, going back to college <laughs> to read this excerpt. 
But if you think it's academic, you're not reading it carefully. Yeah. Because it's not academic. Yeah. It's very applicable to our world. Yeah. The other thing we want to offer you is an interview that Michael and I have done recently. And it just came out last week on InfoQ, and there's a short link to it, where we talk about um, ways that Agile coaches develop themselves all the way up to Enterprise Agile Coach, and also about this model of the four quadrants, at least that piece of it. There's also a podcast from when we, when we were in Australia. What, what's, what's that group's called? I have no idea. The Australian Riot or something. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> it was Craig a great Smith. name. <laughs> uh, that, that's uh, also very useful and addresses the topic of yeah. enterprise coaching. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's we're, uh, if you want to, uh, I think it's the, the break between sessions right now. If you want to ask us a question, we'd love to hear from you. Why don't you come up uh, in the front, and mm -hmm. we'll let you go. Thank you very much for Thank coming. you for your attention.